بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رمضان the month of worship رمضان the month in which Allah سبحانه وتعالى open the door of Jannah رمضان the month in which Allah سبحانه وتعالى closes the gates of Jahannam رمضان is the month in which Allah سبحانه وتعالى chain the shayateen the month in which you get your sin forgiven the month in which you get your piety and your fear and your love of Allah Azza wa Jal increase in his sight. Therefore, our new program of Ramadan, the month of worship, is coming to you. We hope that bi ta'ala you benefit and bring your family all together so we all can have a sweet and fruitful Ramadan bi ta'ala. Knowing that Islam is about five pillars, knowing about the shahadatain, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. There's none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger. And to establish the prayer. And to give the zakah. And we know very well the siyam of Ramadan. And to perform the hajj if you're able to do so physically and financially. Therefore, speaking about Ramadan, the importance of Ramadan. Did you know? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He the Almighty, He had actually revealed about the obligation of month of Ramadan, about its fasting during the period of Medina, not in Mecca. Knowing that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his mission in Mecca was about 13 years. But Allah azza wa waited for the tawheed, for the aqidah, for the creed of the Muslim to be strong. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has gone to Medina where he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. All those who believe, for verily, siyam is being prescribed upon you, just like it was prescribed to the people before you, in order for you to attain piety, in order for you to attain the love, and the fear and the consciousness of Allah Azza wa Therefore, Ramadan is the month in which you build up your love and your fear and your consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is a taqwa? To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hear you, look at you, sees you, wherever and whenever you are. And this is what a taqwa means. Knowing that Ramadan is the month in which when it was revealed about its obligation, it was revealed when it was very hot. Therefore, at that time, we know that Ramadan means Ramad or Ramadan, scorching heat. That is where this name has come from. And it is even said, why do we call it Ramadan? Because it's so, so hot. And you know, when it is really hot, it removes dirt. So then they say that Ramadan, it comes in order to remove and cleanse yourself from sins that you have done because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said man sama ramadana imana wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with conviction and sincerity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his previous sins bi idhnillahi ta'ala knowing that Ramadan is actually a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jalla said in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If ever you were to count the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, you would not be able to do so. But subhanAllah, Ramadan is one of the biggest blessings someone may achieve, of course, because he's living. We could see ourselves, how many people was here last year and this year, they are not here. And we know very well, the ibadah that we do in the month of Ramadan is multiplied. The fast that we do in the month of Ramadan cannot be compared to the fast that we do outside Ramadan. The qiyam and the siyam and the dua and the sadaqah of what we do in the month of Ramadan, wallahi, cannot be compared. Therefore, first and foremost, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity of being in the month 
of Ramadan. Subhanallah, like how we mentioned before, that it is the month in which the shayateen are chained. It is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold back the shayateen. Why? In order for you to be able to exert yourself, in order for you to be able to do all these goods without any kind of whispering from the shaytan. Therefore, we take this month of Ramadan as a kind of training base. We train ourselves because this is the only time when the shayateen are chained. The only time the shayateen are chained. Therefore, at that moment, we train ourselves. Remember, after Ramadan, we have 11 months that we're going to battle the shayateen. Therefore, in the month of Ramadan, we get ourselves pumped up with Iman, with Qira'ah of the Qur'an. We get our Iman increased so that after Ramadan, we have the shield in order to defend ourselves against the trick and the trap and the whispers of shaitan ta'ala. Did you know that subhanallah, one of the goal and the concern of the Muslim is that they always want their sin to be forgiven. They always concern the sin that we have done. Have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiven all these. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all these? Therefore, Ramadan is the time. This is one of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has made you alive at the time of the month of Ramadan. Didn't the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man saama Ramadan iman wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, you're fasting for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. You're doing your qiyam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerely and expecting reward from Allah the Almighty, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most loving one, and always think positive about Allah that He is going, bi idnillah ta'ala, accept your siyam. Therefore, when you fast with sincerity and expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal is going to forgive all your previous sins. Not only that, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as salawat al-khams, the five daily prayers. Wa Ramadan ila Ramadan. Jum'ah ila Jum'ah. Al-Umrah ila Al-Umrah. You know, the five daily prayers that you do. The Umrah to the other Umrah. The Ramadan to the next Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mukaffarat. He forgives each and every sin what you have done. Idha jtunibat al-kabair. If ever you haven't fallen into the major sin. The major sin, we know Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Tubu in Allah, Tawbatan Nasuha. And for the major sin, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to seek repentance with sincere repentance that you don't go back to it again. And as for the other sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them if ever you fast in the month of Ramadan with sincerity and expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can feel it. For the past Ramadan, at the end of Ramadan, you felt good. At the end of Ramadan, you always wanted to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you know why? Because at that moment, shaitan was not there. At that moment, Allah was actually forgiving your sins. You felt good. You felt like a newborn baby. Therefore, Ramadan is the time for us to be able to merge this kind of iman into our daily life and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy bi iznillah ta'ala remember that fasting from dawn to dusk is not only about starving yourself it actually make you someone who's grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that you were able to eat and drink and satisfy your biological needs before fasting and now you're able to control yourself it is called self control and self-restraint People believe, subhanAllah, that siyam is only about abstaining from food from dawn to dusk. That is not the main objective of it. You know, when you actually abstain from food and drink from dawn to dusk, it actually has a big impact on yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made siyam in that manner because there are many benefits into it. First and foremost, is that make you more grateful of what you have. Because outside Ramadan, we eat and we drink and we satisfy ourselves. Therefore, when it comes to Ramadan, then we come to know how grateful we were. And at the same time, when you're abstaining from food and drink, subhanAllah, it makes you feel 
how the less fortunate people in other parts of the world are feeling. Therefore, at that moment, since it is the month of building your taqwa, it makes it easier upon you to remove your zakah, to remove any kind of sadaqah in order for you to give it and put a smile in people's face and heart. Subhanallah, and we know very well, siyam is about to restrain yourself in something that's called self-control. You control yourself from food and drink, and at the same time, from satisfying your biological needs from dawn to dusk. From satisfying your biological needs from dawn to dusk. Therefore, this is the three thing, the three main thing that we need to abstain from. And apart from that, all the sin in Ramadan and outside Ramadan, since Siyam is about restraining and self-controlling, you know, when it comes to anger, it makes it easy upon you to actually control your anger. If you want people nowadays, we know that we are prone to fall into sins in regards to cheating, lying, not lowering the gaze, you know, doing any kind of mischief, calling people names. When you are fasting, it actually restrains you from doing all these. Therefore, siyam is not only about abstaining from food or starving yourself. It is something that actually makes you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Allah is hearing you. At that moment, you are training yourself in order for you to be a better person. And not only siyam, even in the regards to qiyam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to stand in the last 10 part of the, of the night of Ramadan, the last 10 parts of the month of Ramadan in order to seek Laylatul Qadr. Therefore, all these kind of ibadah are meant to be done in Ramadan in order to better yourself outside Ramadan. Knowing that Ramadan is all about the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one of the things as well that we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed the qiyam with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama Ramadana imana wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. Whoever stands in the night in prayer, seeking the guidance and the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal with sincerity, expecting the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will forgive his sins. Remember that the Qiyam is between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. You're standing in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, during the day, you abstain from food for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. During the night, you abstain from sleeping for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Remember that on Yawm al Qiyamah, the Siyam and the Qiyam, they shall come to intercede for you on the Day of Judgment. The Siyam will say, Ya Allah, for verily, I abstain him and I refrain him from eating during the day. Therefore, Ya Allah, I intercede for him and Allah, Azza wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that intercession. And the Qiyam will come and then the Qiyam will say, Ya Allah, for verily, I refrain him from sleeping during the night in order to seek your pleasure, Ya Allah. So I intercede for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that intercession. How beautiful is that month? Wallahi, when this month is about to finish, those people who are seeking the sweetness of Ramadan, they don't want that month to finish. They don't want that month to end because they can feel the guidance and the nur and the light and the sweetness of Ramadan in their life. Therefore, the Qiyam is one among the main part of Ramadan. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would exert himself in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Why? In order to seek Laylatul Qadr. Remember that in Ramadan, we have a night in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the Quran. And that night, whoever get that night in prayer, it will be as if he has prayed better than a thousand months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. For verily that night, it is better than praying more than a thousand nights. Therefore, this kind of night we should not let go. So in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, it is the time where we look for it. So standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
in Qiyam is one of the main parts of Ramadan ta'ala. Speaking about the sincerity of Ramadan, we've spoken about the hadith the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever fasts and whoever stayed in Qiyam and whoever stayed in Qiyam in Laylatul Qadr with sincerity and expecting reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his minor sins. But subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized upon sincerity. The thing nowadays is that we make ibadah according to what we see people do. That is not the way of doing ibadah. We need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to make siyam. We need to learn how to give the zakah. This is our deen. We need to learn in order for us to feel the sweetness of the fasting in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, there are people who do not want the month to be over. In the month of Ramadan, there are people who feel like it's a burden and they want it to be over. We don't want to be among these kind of people. Therefore, when do you feel that you don't want Ramadan to be over? Is the time when you feel the sweetness of Ramadan. You feel the sweetness of the Quran and the Siyam and the Qiyam. Therefore, we want to be among these people. One of the main important things for all of our ibadah, for it to be accepted, is the two conditions, which is sincerity and to do it according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah Azza wa Jal has created life and death in order to test you to see who among you do the best of deeds. How can your deeds be the best? is when you do it with sincerity and you do it according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, our siyam, our qiyam, our salawat, our way of reading the Qur'an all has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. For verily, my life, my death, my sacrifice, my prayer, all my ibadah of all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe.